Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to Passing the SLP Praxis. I am your host, Melanie Evans, a certified mindset life coach and speech language pathologist. I also love helping Praxis preppers just like you get over the hurdle of passing the SLP Praxis exam with subconscious mind reprogramming techniques and proven strategies that I use to get my score to jump 13 points. If you are new here, please go ahead, like, share, subscribe, download this episode, re-watch it because this is probably going to be one of my favorite episodes, y'all. I love talking about subconscious mind reprogramming. I love talking about self-care and ultimately things that I wish I knew when I was studying for the SLP Praxis exam and things that are helping me to this day as a certified speech language pathologist. So let's get into today's episode. Today we are talking about the morning routine that will keep you motivated on your goals ease your test-taking anxiety, and overall help you cultivate that unwavering belief in yourself that you are capable of passing this exam and achieving anything else that you want to put your mind to. So let's go ahead and get a little bit scientific. As soon as you wake up, your subconscious mind is like a sponge. So that is also why it's very important for you to start your day with positive self-talk. Let me give you some science with this. It's called brain wave theory. And I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit from the article. I will put these in the show notes. You can find some more information on medium.com and healthline.com. So when we first wake up, our mind is in the theta, the theta wave state. And ultimately, let me backtrack. What brainwave theory is, our brain cycle through different brainwave states throughout the day, each associated with different levels of alertness and cognitive function. So when we wake up, our mind is in theta wave state. These dominate during light sleep and deep relaxation. Theta waves are associated with increased receptivity to suggestion and heightened emotional processing. So ultimately what that means is as soon as we wake up, our minds are very receptive to messages. And that's why I recommend to really practice that positive self-talk. That's why you might have noticed if you wake up and you look at your phone and then you see something that's negative, it throws off your whole morning. I'll honestly give you a really great example. I was sleeping and I woke up and I'm like, oh, what a beautiful day. What a lovely day. And then what I do not love, I love my dogs, but they come busting into my room as soon as they realize I'm up. And that's very shocking to my nervous system. And it puts me into a bad mood. And then I have to regulate myself. And obviously, when your nervous system is shocked, that's when the thoughts come in that honestly don't help it. And you have to consciously talk yourself off the ledge, so to speak. So that might be just one example for you. Maybe it's just stubbing your toe. Or for you, it's looking at your Instagram and seeing something shocking online or, you know, whatever that may be. So. That's why the first thing that we are going to recommend that you do is not to look at your phone. Turn off the alarm, but don't don't even look at the messages. I keep my phone on do not disturb so that way I don't even see the messages first thing in the morning. I go to the bathroom, I brush my teeth, I wash my face, and then I go right back to bed. Okay, now you're going to want to stay sitting up so that way you don't go to sleep. Now, I also do set another alarm. This is why Siri and Alexa are amazing because I just might say, hey, Alexa, set a timer for 25 minutes. So that way I'm not falling asleep. (laughs) Okay, because you will get very relaxed with this. Then what you're going to do is turn on YouTube and you're going to want to play some binaural beats that will help activate those brain waves. I personally like uh, subliminals because they send you really great suggestions. So I might do subliminals for creativity. I might do subliminals for self-belief. I need to create a whole other episode on subliminals and I really actually have this desire and it's going to be coming very soon to create a subliminal for Praxis success. But just keep that in mind. You can go and Google subliminals and I'll go ahead and put a link in the show notes. Uh, Yes. So after you, as you're listening to these subliminals, what you're going to do is 
gratitude journaling. Even if you think of just five things that you are grateful for that day. So you might say, I am grateful for the sun. I am grateful for the breath in my lungs. I am grateful for this very cozy room. I am grateful for maybe your roommate is out for the weekend or something. I am grateful to have this extra time to myself, whatever that may be, right? So already go ahead and show gratitude for the day. Then what I do, as I'm already in those really high vibe states, and the reason why I want to make sure that I'm in a high vibe state rather than um, my lower vibe state, for lack of better words, is because next you're going to go into a visualization or hypnosis. So pretty much your eyes are going to be closed and you're going to be visualizing your success in anything you want, but specifically the Praxis exam. And if you don't do the gratitude journal, or maybe, maybe you don't need the gratitude journaling, but I needed the gratitude journaling personally because sometimes I might still be overwhelmed. I might still be carrying energy from the night before um, or just worries from even just opening my eyes from the day. You know, we're human. And what that does, what having that gratitude energy and feeling and my body does is it helps me easily combat other negative thoughts that might try to come through as I'm trying to rest. Because again, your brain is trained to protect you. And so what might happen is fight or flight might turn on. And if you are visualizing and actively visualizing yourself being calm and confident on exam day and everything automatically anxiety jumps in and it's like, but what if this happens? But what if that happens? And you want to be able to keep yourself in like, hey, wait a second. There's so much to be grateful for. Everything is good. We are right here in the present moment and it's safe. We're simply just reminding ourselves how amazing we are and how we are capable of passing this exam and how it's going to feel very good when we walk into the test center or when we open up our laptop to take the exam, right? Okay. So after you do your hypnosis or your visualization, I recommend doing EFT tapping or scripting or both. I honestly have a very long morning routine. I like to give myself 30 minutes to an hour for my morning routine. That's how I feel most comfortable and ready for the day. So if you have time to fit in the EFT tapping and the scripting, then you are good to go. So I do EFT tapping. I have posted some EFT tapping videos on the YouTube and then you'll also see it on my Instagram account. Or if you are a student in the Passing the SLP Practice Programs, I create personalized EFT tapping videos for you to help make your success inevitable. So when you're done with that EFT tapping routine, what you're going to do is script. And this is why I recommend doing the mini course. It's a free mini course. Go ahead and check it out in the show notes because I actually give you a script where you're able to manifest your passing score. You're able to identify what that will look like when you're passing or the day of your passing score, what the noises that you will hear, the sounds that you'll hear, how you'll feel in your body, the thoughts that you will think, the things that you'll smell. You're able to really make it even more real for you and train yourself into believing that it's inevitable. It's already done. And so what scripting does is it not only reminds you and your subconscious mind that all of these things are already happening, but it also just continues to send messages to the universe like, hey, I'm ready for this thing. I'm ready for this thing. I'm ready for this thing. Please continue to guide me. So I hope that this episode helped you out. This is my favorite morning routine. The last thing, of course, that you're going to want to do is exercise, get your blood flow up, maybe go take a shower, go outside and get some sunlight. Even better if you can do this out in the sun, but just make sure that you're staying in that relaxed state. I know personally... If I step outside before I do this, I'm going to, you know, be reminded of all the responsibilities I have. And this is kind of what you don't want to do this yet. Okay. After this calming self-care morning routine, it's when you're like, okay, here are the things that I want to do for my day. All right, so I hope that this episode helped you. Go ahead and check out the show notes for some more information, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, fam.